This video, we'll walk through the predictive analytics process, some areas of opportunity, challenges posed, and some tools that can be leveraged. So, consumers of predictive analytics, who are they? Basically, about a third of the consumers are those working in marketing. That's not really a surprise, but was interesting to note. Um, so this involves activities such as customer segmentation and profiling, customer acquisition, customer churn, customer lifetime value management, and so on. Another third of consumers are banks, financial institutions. They use predictive analytics for things such as fraud detection and risk analysis. And the rest of the consumers really come from various, various industries and different scales of organizations. And they use it for things such as sales forecasting, sentiment ana analysis, and other uses. So why are predictive analytics in such great demand? Well, according to a survey conducted by TWI Research, the, the drivers for predictive analytics focus on various aspects of business, such as customer understanding, understanding the needs and wants of the customer, operation efficiencies, product development, and innovation. <clears throat> so we can think of the predictive analytics in a process as a seven-step approach. So basically we define objectives, understand the data, prepare the data, develop a model or models, deploy those models, monitor the performance, and then we can analyze results. And if needed, we start again and relook at our objectives and it basically can be an ongoing cycle. So defining objectives, this is where we understand the business goal that we need to achieve with our analysis. It's very important to have very deep domain knowledge. You really need to understand the business to successfully define the objectives. Next is understanding the data. So you need to assess the data that's available and determine if any additional data is needed. How do you blend that data together? Understanding the limitations of the data. Is it messy data? And if it is, then you go ahead and you start to prepare it which means you cleanse, you inspect, and transform the data to structure it as needed for your analysis. Um, data that's basically inaccurate or outdated, or if there are duplicates in there, it won't drive optimal analysis and you won't be able to make any accurate decision-making. The next step is to develop the models. This is where I would say more experienced and techie data scientists thrive, and this is where they have the most fun, is determining first which models need to be used and developing the necessary models. So this step requires very deep technical knowledge to determine which tools are optimal and models that need to be used. So basically a predictive model is the way it, the attributes of an individual are factored together for the prediction process. And there are actually several methods that can be used for predictive analytics. I've outlined a couple of um, types of models or methods that you can use. So we have linear models, generalized addi additive models, logistic regression, survival analysis, decision tree learning, Bayesian methods, neural networks, memory-based reasoning, and genetic algorithms. And these are just a couple of the all of the types of models that you can use. And I'm not going to go into, you know, talking about each of these because I think each of these can be an entire course on itself, but just wanted to provide some of the types of models that are available. The next step is to deploy models. So now we can use the models that we've created to conduct the analysis. We execute the models on various data sets. And now we get to monitor the performance. So we need to absorb, observe the performance of the models to ensure it's accurate and we can tweak the models as necessary and monitor use, monitoring the usage to ensure that it's performing as needed. And it's really good to keep a record of the lesson learned for future use, just so you can make sure not to make the same mistakes again. And then the last step, analyzing results, is where you review the results of the analysis and determine if the objectives were reached. Opportunities. So predictive analytics provides ample opportunities for organizations to use their data to their advantage. And some of the areas that predictive analytics can be used for is to enhance customer service, acquire more profitable customers, predict employee performance, sell more products and services to existing customers. You can try to retain profitable customers for longer periods of time, managing risk and fraud activity, identifying some patterns in behaviors of, of either customers or employees or just people, um, and resource optimization. 
Although there are plenty of benefits and advantages as we just discussed, uh, predictive analytics does pose some challenges. Uh, for example, the cost of acquiring data analytics experts, um, cost of commercial software, over-reliance on the results of software, lack of skills and understanding of technology, and lack of understanding of the business potential. So well, one thing that's interesting is the over-reliance on the results of software. It can be really detrimental for those that don't have an understanding of what's happening under, under the hood, you can say. It can really result in trusting the output of an incorrect model or trusting incorrect um, output from an accurate model. So you really need to understand what's going on. And it's interesting that the cost of acquiring data analytics experts is becoming really difficult because now more than ever, companies are really fighting to get the, the new data, the, the experienced data scientists into their company. So it's very competitive. So another thing I wanted to talk about is the necessary skills. So again, to go back to the survey conducted by TWI Research, knowledge of the business Critical thinking and understanding of source data are the top three skills needed to perform predictive analytics. Other skills noted include um, training in predictive analytics, communication skills, a degree in some quantitative discipline like statistics, and training on predictive uh, analytics software. So some people are under the misconception that training on software is actually very important and they take all these courses and they really study the software. But as you can see here, the most important thing is knowledge of the business, critical thinking, and knowledge and understanding of the data. So these top three is something I would say you learn through experience. You learn this on the job. So don't spend too much of your time just studying the software. Make sure that, especially when you get your first predictive analytics problem, make sure you understand the actual the business, you understand the actual objective, and don't get lost in the software. Another thing I wanted to highlight here, um, and this is a periodic table of predictive analytics. Basically, Knowledge Tree compiled this list of predictive analytics technologies and summarized it as a periodic table. So I just thought it was really cool, and you can see that they've segmented it by different um, industries or uses, and you can see that, for example, here, this teal color is business analytics and something like Tableau and SAS and IBM come into, um, into this view. One thing to note here is that prior to purchasing any predictive analytics software, you should conduct a very thorough analysis of the tools. Make sure that the algorithms and procedures will support your required analysis and don't invest in any software until you really, really have a need because there are several free tools available. I've actually included a list of tools here that you can, you know, you can look at. For example, R provides a wide variety of statistical functionalities. It includes linear, nonlinear, time series analysis, classification, clustering, and graphical techniques. You can use RapidMiner. It provides machine learning procedures, including uh, data loading, data transformation, data pre-processing, visualization, modeling, evaluation, and deployment. You can also use Tableau Public. You can use the predictive analytics to gain insights from behavioral, geospatial, and other structured or unstructured data. And the user-friendly interface really puts data exploration and the decision-making into the hands of business users. So you don't really need any in-depth coding or anything to use Tableau Public. It's really user-friendly. Then we can talk about Anaconda, which is powered by Python. And it is a high-performance distribution that includes several, several packages something called H2O. So it's a predictive analytics platform that allows users to explore and model big data from within Microsoft Excel and RStudio. And you can connect with data from various data sources. So algorithms here include distributed trees and regression, gradient boosting machine, random forest, generalized linear modeling, k-means and PCA, which is principal component analysis. DMA basic. It basically allows users to build predictive models very quickly. It's designed to model the steps taken by very experienced data scientists in order to build accurate and effective analytics models. Kneme Desktop. It's another user-friendly tool for data transformation. You can use it for investigation, predictive analytics, visualization, and also reporting. 
So it basically provides the ability to develop reports based on data information and to automate the application of new insights back into production systems. Actaion Analytics Platform Express. So this turns Hadoop into a high performance analytic platform. It improves accuracy of predictions and decision making by analyzing data from more sources without sampling. Alteryx Project Edition. So here you have over 150 tools to blend, cleanse, and analyze the data. So you have predictive drag and drop tools that can build into analytic workflows. And last but not least, there's Weka, which is a popular tool for machine learning, and it contains a collection of visualization tools and algorithms for analysis and predictive modeling. Thank you for watching.